Hi guys, I'm so happy you're here. My name is Danny, and I'm the creator of Water and Cotton. I'll be primarily creating watercolor videos on this channel, so if that's something you're interested in, I would be so grateful if you would go ahead and press that subscribe button down below. My goal here on YouTube is to provide you with high quality video and information, and I would love your feedback. If you have any critiques and criticisms about how I can do better, let me know in the comments. I will say I am very much a beginner artist. I started using watercolor in February, so by the time this is posted, I'll have been using the medium for about four months or so. So I'm sure you're wondering, why should I watch a beginner? Well, I'm using YouTube and Instagram to document my progress as an artist and hopefully to create a community of people to learn together. So if you're a beginner or if you're a professional artist, I would love to have you on my creative journey. I will be reviewing paints and other watercolor supplies on the channel. I do want to clearly state that it is not my intention to make a living from these reviews or to promote something that I don't believe in. I will do my very best to be as transparent as possible as I continue making art. I do also recognize, however, that the supplies we use to make art can greatly impact the pieces we make, and I do want to do my best to educate you about what I know. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the Jane Blundell Ultimate Mixing Set from Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith is a brand of paint that's based out of Seattle, Washington. Daniel Smith himself was a printmaker and founded the company in 1976. Naturally, printmaking supplies began the company, but it ultimately began making watercolor, oil, and acrylic paints as well. Before I got this set of paints, I had done an unruly amount of research on paint brands and what to purchase as a beginner. I knew that I was a serious beginner and wanted to invest in a nice set of paints. I also knew that I didn't want to pay an arm and a leg for a few tubes of paint. After watching a few videos from In Liquid Color by Denise Soden here on YouTube and over on Skillshare, I decided that this set was a wonderful set of paints to start out with. I would definitely recommend her Skillshare class on creating a watercolor palette. If you check out my Amazon affiliate links below, I have linked all 14 colors. I did not include Jane's Gray as you can mix it yourself with Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine. I will note, however, that tubes can be found a bit cheaper on Jackson's Art Supply or Jerry's Artorama online. If you are simply looking to buy a set to test out, Daniel Smith also has a palette which is pre-made that I have also linked below. I will warn you though that I myself have not tried this palette and I've heard mixed reviews on its overall quality for its price. The fact that you only get a half pan of paint in a low quality plastic palette turns me off a bit from the product. Considering you can get about 7 fills of a half pan out of one of these tubes. So yes, the tubes are more expensive up front, but if you plan on continuing to paint, the tubes are much more economical. The brush I'm using today is a Grace Art Practice brush, and this was actually one of the first brushes that I had purchased. It came in a set of 10 or 12 both flat and round brushes. They hold their shape beautifully and are ridiculously inexpensive, so check them out in the link below. The one I'm using today is definitely a little bit beat up because I use them almost exclusively for a month or two and I didn't know how to clean my brushes yet. So, All right, we're going to go ahead and get started here with Buff Titanium. This one is comprised of PW61, is highly light fast, semi-transparent, and non-staining. This one is really nice. It mixes with other colors and makes them a little bit more subtle or pastel. Jane Blundell herself mentions using the color for sandy beaches. It does granulate, so I would imagine it would be really nice to create a texture for that. It's perfect for mixing and adjusting skin tones. Next up in the palette is Hansa Yellow Medium. It's comprised of PY97, is highly light, fast, semi-transparent, and semi-staining. This one doesn't lean too cool or too warm, so it really could function as the only yellow in a palette depending on what colors you like to mix in your work. I like using this one for making a lot of nice oranges and peaches. Now, Daniel Smith is somewhat famous for this next color, quinacridone gold. It used to be comprised of the single pigment P049. It's now made with pigments P048 and PY150, which I also think is quite beautiful. Why did they switch? Well, Daniel Smith ran out of the original pigment. They made it for almost two decades, and then they had to cease production in late 2017. A remarkable feat if you consider that the rumored supplier stopped chemical synthesis in 2001. All quinacridone colors I made from the same base or parent molecule, terephthalic acid with a 2,5-dianalide. Different hues are formed depending on where and what side chains extend from the parent molecule, as well as how those parent molecules are bonded together during synthesis. I'll stop with the heavy chemistry for now, but here's my point. Are large suppliers making PO49 currently? No. But is it possible that a supplier or a capable organic chemist with the right tools 
Could they, could they make more? Yeah, probably. Anyways, a half pan of the original color will run you about $50 US on eBay currently. To move into our reds, we're going to go ahead and get started with our warm red Pyro Scarlet. I don't have a whole lot to say about this color other than it is a beautiful fire engine red. It's comprised of PR255, is semi-transparent, and semi-staining. And although I don't know a lot about watercolor properties yet, from what I do understand, pyros are better for mixing and they decrease the risk of making a muddy color. Pyro Scarlet has a very cool companion, Pyro Crimson. Similar in properties to Pyro Scarlet, PR264 makes a highly light fast, semi-transparent, and semi-staining color. This bluer hue ensures we have ample mixing opportunities with our red shades. Both our warm and cool red neutralize beautifully with some colors we will get to here in a moment that belong on the other side of the color wheel. Moving right along into my favorite color in this set, and possibly my favorite color ever, Quinacridone Rose. It's comprised of PV19, it's highly light fast, transparent, and semi-staining. From florals to skin tones to hazy sunsets, I really love this color. I will note that I have tried a few other PV19s from different brands and I did see that they look a little bit different to me, so I would caution you that not all PV19s look exactly like this. Ah, uh, the beloved Ultramarine, comprised of PV29. This one is highly light fast, transparent, and semi-staining. This is actually the color I was most hesitant to get because I had heard that this version from Daniel Smith was difficult to re-wet and difficult to work with as compared to other brands. I have been able to sample some Ultramarines from other brands, and I will say that they do re-wet a bit better than this one, but I haven't come across one that has the same beautiful granulation. So if you want a smooth PP29, Snellier and Schmincke are your best bet, but if you're looking to keep the texture, DS is the way to go. Up next, we have Raw Umber. This one is comprised of PBR7. It's highly light, fast, semi-transparent, and semi-staining. For a few months, raw umber was the only dark brown I had and it worked perfectly for everything I needed it to do. This dark, cool brown can be deepened easily with mixes and it is incredibly versatile. Next up, we have Indian Red. It's comprised of PR101, is highly light, fast, opaque, and semi-staining. Somewhat similar to Burnt Sienna, this color is an earthy pigment that honestly, I might be able to live without. If I were cutting some colors from this set to make it only 12 pans for traveling or fitting into a specific tin, this might be the one to go. Don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful color and it's amazing for mixes, but I don't see myself reaching for it much. It's close in hue to burnt sienna and doesn't give me the wow factor. I have painted a lot of nature subjects and prefer the softness of other colors in this palette. What do you all use this color for? What are your experiences with it? Let me know in the comments. Burnt Sienna is a staple in most artist palettes. This one is comprised of PBR7, is highly light fast, semi-transparent, and semi-staining. I really use this color quite a bit. As promised, when mixed with Ultramarine, it makes a fabulous gray. And quite honestly, you don't really need a Payne's gray or neutral tint in your palette with these two colors. As a standalone color, Burnt Sienna, well, Daniel Smith's Burnt Sienna is really pretty. Its pinky undertones and earthy texture is everything you need from the color. If you paint, well, anything, you should have at least one version of Burnt Sienna. Gothite, otherwise known as Brown Ochre, is a beautifully granulating earth tone. It is comprised of PY43, is highly light fast, semi-transparent, and semi-staining. Although I have not used this one a ton, I really do love the way it mixes. It makes every color it comes into contact with granulate as well. Mixing with other earth tones makes them more complex and gives them more texture. Moving on to the phthalos. Guys, like I said, this is my first set of paint, so I had never used watercolor paint before these, and I loved the experience as I swatched out both of these colors. Both of the phthalos are so strong and vibrant. These are tough for me to use in paintings without mixing just because they look well too colorful or strong. I think I did paint a few tropical leaves with these colors and I really enjoyed using the pure pigments, but nothing about them looked incredibly natural. Thalo Blue Green Shade is comprised of PB153 and Thalo Green Blue Shade is comprised of PG7. Both are highly light, fast, transparent, and staining. 
Thala Green Blue Shade works really well in my opinion to make some beautiful neutral colors when it mixes with the reds mentioned previously. You can adjust the amount of each and get beautiful grays that lean toward one color or the other. Rounding out the blues and our palette, we have Cerulean Chromium. This one is comprised of PB36, is highly light fast, semi-transparent, and semi-staining. Jane Blundell herself clearly states that she much prefers the PB36 version of this color as there is a PB35 available under the same name. This color is somewhat granulating which I do enjoy and it rounds out an abundance of blues for mixing. Maybe it's because I don't really know how to use it yet, but I don't reach for this color very often. I haven't painted a lot of clouds and skies yet, so maybe this color will have a bit more use as I delve into landscape painting. And finally, we'll go ahead and mix up some of this gray that I've been talking about. Jane Blundell said that the color should be mixed with a 50-50 mix of Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine. I personally like to make it just a bit more blue for most purposes. That's the beauty of it, and really the beauty of the entire palette. You can make thousands and thousands of colors from these 14 tubes of paint. I would definitely recommend going over to Jane Blondell's website and checking out all of her references there for color mixing. I just wanted to quickly show you guys um, a mixing chart that I had made very early on in my watercolor journey with this Jane Blondell Ultimate Mixing Set. So bear with me because a lot of these mixes probably weren't done quite correctly because I didn't really know um, how to mix colors at this point, but I just wanted to point out a couple things. So the ones that are made from buff titanium or mixed with buff titanium, you can kind of tell that they're a little bit more um, opaque and a little bit more pastel. And I think that's really interesting yeah. to kind of see those colors all aligned with one another, just so you have an idea of what mixing with that particular color can do. And then I would also say the ones that are mixes of the quinacridones, those are kind of interesting just because they separate out from each other just a little bit. There's one towards the center of the screen that is like blue and gold in that one. Um, I believe those colors are actually in cascade green and that's kind of how they um, use those colors to separate out and make some of those beautiful tones that are really specific to Daniel Smith. The last order of business for this video is the giveaway. The winner of this giveaway will be receiving a Magello palette filled with samples of the Ultimate Mixing Set by Daniel Smith. Mm -hmm. Usha R, congratulations, you are the winner of our giveaway. I'll be contacting you via Instagram in the next 24 hours. Thank you guys very much for being here for my very first YouTube video. I really appreciate your presence. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram for updates on water and cotton. Bye!